Welcome, everybody. Hello. I'm so happy to see you here. Welcome to Ibiza. Welcome to Sabina. Today, it's a very, I'm, I'm honored of being here in front of you, presenting to you Fundación Beclimet. I'm going to have to move here back and forth, so bear, bear with me. So Fundación Beclimet is a nonprofit organization that is put together to, to support the development of psychedelic medicine through research, education, dissemination, and the study of consciousness. I'm your general chair, Lena Williamson. I'm the newly appointed executive director of Fundación Beclimet, brand new in the field. Um, and uh, I would like to thank you all for being here. All those who've been with the team through the journey and all those new to the mission. Thank you, welcome, and I really hope that we're gonna create a really good family, a really good vibe here, and you're gonna end up loving us as much as I love them. Thank you also to the Beckley team who really kindly, with a lot of efforts, help us to put this together. Karina, thank you very much. Iñaki, Vera Saluce, I said it right. Thank you very much. And obviously with the support of our president, Mia Fabregas, our supervisor, Pablo, who is uh, actually going to join us via um, uh, our digital platform. Uh, he's unfortunately not here today, but he is here virtually. And all of the Beckley team here present, you can find them here at the very front. Um, special thanks as well go to Amanda. Literally, Amanda Fielding, we wouldn't be here without you and everything that you have done for the field. Thank you so much. Bravo. And of course, Christian, thank you for backing us up, for being with us through all these years. <laughs> the good in the bad and in the best. The best is, is for coming. Um, we Today is a very important day for us. It is the first time that we are presenting our mission, our vision, and what we intend to do for the world to like-minded people like you, people who aspire to live in a world where health and nature are in synchronicity to maintain a balanced life with an integrated mind, body, and soul. And guess what? We can do that with psychedelics. This is our founding team. Um, thank you for all the work of uh, Dr. Fabregas, Christian, and Amanda that you have already uh, celebrated. Mm, they are betting on psychedelic medicine to transform mental health and to transform well-being. Um, and we are here to, you know, the extended team is here to help them to achieve that goal for us to live better, to feel better, and to overall be better. Mental health well-being is really not just about one angle. It's multidimensional. It's not just about psychology or about psychiatry. It's just not about uh, an experience with psychedelics or it's just not about a experience on elevating our consciousness. It's an integration of all of them. And we at Beckley Met are committed to look at all those angles to see the person as a whole being and to really help and understand what is the need and how psychedelics can push us towards the next step. So we are having a integrated, we are calling, calling it an integrated psychedelic medicine. We aim to become a world-leading center of excellence, where we are committed to um, move this integrated psychedelic medicine forward for prevention in particular, so that everybody can have access to psychedelics and be well and be happy and avoid all these chronic diseases. And instead of being reactive as we are doctors right now, we, are, we have reactive medicine, we pretend and we intend and we aim and have this um, intention to change that. 
and focus on prevention. To tell us a little bit more about how we're going to do it and why Barcelona and why you guys are here, I would like to invite to the podium Christian. Please come up. Uh, microphone, please. Uh, can I have a microphone, please? Am I making you crazy with too loud here? Right. You shut me off, please. <coughs> Thank you, Lina. Thank you, everyone who's here tonight. Uh, um, it's it's uh, very special. I mean, this I think we are three and a half years into this project in this constellation. Uh, but then, you know, Amanda has been working with concepts like this and ideas like this for much, much longer. And uh, Jose Maria, just an incredible amount of experience with uh, how to apply these uh, type of healing processes in, in, in our societies. And it's just really humbling to be uh, able to work with uh, two wonderful, uh, unique uh, characters like this. And, uh, and the rest of the team, as you will see, are just as uh, incredible. And uh, the country we, we live in is also quite incredible. Uh, Spain has, uh, uh, you know, a, a very accommodating uh, <laughs> legal system and uh, an incredible amount of uh, constitutional protection of, of, of personal integrity and, and, and civil liberties. So in actually what's happening now around the world is uh, many countries is becoming more and more difficult to receive medicines uh, and Spain is actually uh, uh, very different. Uh, there was a very uh, famous case uh, just six months ago and, um, and uh, someone was caught with ayahuasca and they tried to do the most draconian in in interpretation of his uh, possession and then claim that it was dangerous drugs and, and the case came to the judge and the judge went through the reference materials and concluded that I'm not going to try this case. Uh, not only is there questionable uh, reasons to believe that uh, this is harmful, it actually could be very beneficial. And my recommendation to regulators is to fi find a way to, to, to deal with these uh, uh, processes and regulate them. And uh, that was it, case closed, the person went free. So this is, you know, huge. Uh, and uh, also uh, it gives us uh, an opportunity here in Spain Right now, on the on the research side, in all of the Western world, it's uh, very difficult to conduct uh, research on non-chemical -chem compounds. You know, the Western scientific uh, uh, process is about you know uh, reducing noise, uh, so singular compounds, and it's very difficult to get anything approved that is not targeted to a, a, a clinical condition. And, and uh, what we are able to do here uh, in, in, in this research institute, in this foundation, is to study uh, non-medical conditions uh, and using plant medicines um, and plant natural compounds, really. Uh, <coughs> and I think this is very special uh, because I think everyone in the, this room has had at least one very transformative psychedelic experience and many of us have an ongoing relationship with psychedelics and plant medicines. And I think we have all uh, uh, seen how much benefits that they can provide us in, in our lives. And, uh, and right now, the w way the, the psychedelic drug development world is heading, which is tremendous and amazing and fantastic, and companies like Beckley SciTech and Amanda are doing tremendous progress in that direction, and there's many many companies and initiative, but it's still very much focused on the, the tip of the iceberg, the people that are suffering from very debilitating conditions, such as uh, treatment-resistant depression and post-traumatic stress and so on. Uh, and, but what we can study here is really look into the, uh, the future and say, you know, what else can this be useful for and how can it be done in a more holistic way where we don't have to reduce it 
so narrowly, but we can take a broader uh, uh, view on, 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 on how these healing journeys can be, be done and how they can be done in a more holistic way. Uh, and this legal uh, opportunity is here, but not only is it the legal opportunity, it's also an opportunity because the, you have a bureaucracy and a political uh, class, especially in Catalonia, that is very well educated and very bold. And, and, and thanks to decades of work from people like Claudio Naranjo, who was actually an initial founder of this foundation in this initiative, but sadly passed away. Um, uh, the work of Claudio Naranjo, the work of ICERS, uh, ben Delonen is here in the room. If you get a chance to speak to him, definitely take that opportunity. Uh, you know, together they published, uh, with the Health Ministry of Catalonia, a guideline on safe plant medicine practices. I might misstate that slightly, but broadly that's <laughs> what the essence was. And this was a publication from the Health Ministry, and that just shows you that they are very well advanced. In Catalonia, they regulated, someone discovered this back door with the cannabis clubs, and instead of shutting it down, they tackled the problem head on and created a regulatory structure to, to enable it. So Catalonia is very avant-garde, if you like. And then, uh, which is the reason why it is avant-garde, it has, outside of the United States, it's pretty much, and, and, and Holland, uh, is one of the most well-established communities of both plant medicines uh, and, uh, and uh, psychedelic therapy. So, you know, is a huge amount of people who have done this work, not only facilitating for patients, but also worked with it themselves. And this is really unique. Uh, and um, that, that's why I think we really have a unique opportunity now with, with Beckley Med and this incredible team that you will get to know better. And I think it's uh, the perfect moment. And I think Ibiza is the perfect place. And <laughs> everyone who knows uh, about this team and this process knows that you get this many characters in a room, it's not going to be easy because everyone are kind of, you know, rebels and uh, dreamers and uh, rule breakers and, uh, you know, and now to get everyone together and to, to kind of find a course. But thankfully, Lina came like a, a guiding angel and, and kind of... Yeah kicked us in the, in the butt and now we're, now we're heading forward. And it's really, really exciting. And I just want to say, express my gratitude for everyone on this uh, front bench here for all this work and all this commitment over three and a half years. So much time, so much discussions. Every Tuesday, another call, another call. And actually with very little tangible uh, progress. But now we put ourselves in a position where I think we can really create uh, 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 something that can, can make a big difference uh, for our ability to enjoy uh, these wonderful compounds in the most constructive ways in our societies, which I think will have a tremendous impact on the world and, and, and the trajectory of the world. So thank you, everybody. And uh, I don't know, who do I hand over to? <laughs> the best way to interact with you all and tell you about our mission and, and what are we going to develop was to have a similar conversation here with Amanda. Um, we, it's interesting, you know, the way how you approach it. We talk about these four angles that Beckley Matt will address, you know, to address psychedelic medicine. <laughs> One of them being the elevation of consciousness, which seems to be the first step that you took you know, before you started your journey. You want to tell us a little bit about that time of your childhood when you ah, started? Yes. Um, well, I'm very nervous of uh, <laughs> boring you all. Because <laughs> going from the subject we come to talk about, to suddenly talk about my childhood. But uh -huh. I suppose it has a kind of vague relationship because... Um, I, I've been at this game a long time, since whatever it is, a small child, mm -hmm. when I grew up in a very, very beautiful surroundings, uh, a medieval fortress fallen down with three moats on the edge of a fen, but there were no children or kind of things to do, and my parents had no money, so there were no toys. They had nothing to do but wander around and dream of the future and adventure, 
and have mystical experiences, as children do. Mm -hmm. So then I got obsessed with mystical experiences, because my godfather was a Buddhist monk, quite a famous Buddhist monk. Mm -hmm. And so I got very um, fascinated with that. And from about the age of 10, studied it. And then what happened? And then um, I, I won a school science prize. And the, I wanted books on Buddhism. And the nuns forbid me to have Buddhism. They said I could have art. So I said, thank you very much. I'm leaving and I'm going to educate myself, thanks. And so I headed with 25 pounds, because that was all one could take out in those days, but also probably all one could get. And um, I headed to see him in Sri Lanka, um, Ceylon. And anyway, I never got there. Had all sorts of adventures. <laughs> and um, and then you got to the point that you met Bart. Then I got to a point when yeah. I, well, I started taking compounds, studied um, comparative religions at Oxford and mysticism, and then in ninety, and then after a lot in of psychedelics, mm -hmm. I uh, met Bart, and he. He was a, a, a Dutch scientist of exceptional brilliance, and he had two hypotheses. Funny enough, he'd just come from Ibiza, this was in 1966, mm -hmm. where he had been distributed, he'd made LSD in Amsterdam mm -hmm. in his friend's mother's kitchen, and she'd thrown it away and had to start again. But, and not? that was the LSD which turned Europe on from, from Ibiza. So it ha I have a fond memory of Ibiza. And then that was my first LSD. And then I met Bart. And he basically gave me the understanding I was looking for, which was, how do you, what is a mystical experience? How, how, does, how is it that the psychedelics um, helps find that space? And so it brought two interests together. And his passion was science. And he had two hypotheses about, one, how changes in blood, uh, brain blood volume, in underlies the increase in consciousness. Mm -hmm. And it's giving a kind of farmer's explanation to consciousness. It's very basic and, and very simple. And that was in 1967, are we talking about? That was in 66, beginning 66. of 66. Right. And the other great... Uh, um, hypothesis he had was that the ego is a conditioned reflex mechanism mm -hmm. by which we direct the blood in the brain where we want it to go. So that was like a mechanism of action, yeah. basically. Yeah. Yes. And so, and we predicted that with psychedelics, it lost control, and that's when the whole brain mm -hmm. became more unified. And it was about that time that you kind of figured out your mission. Right, your yes. mission of also tell us a little uh, bit about. Well, my mission had been as a child something like to water the desert. It was always kind of heroic and whatever, as childish things are. And then I realised well that my mission was actually to water the desert of the human brain, because I saw very soon that psychedelics can be a tool by which you can control the level of uh, a consciousness you have. And in a way, consciousness is our most precious gift. And to be able to have that in one's hands, to be able to meaningfully change the state, and if you want to concentrate, then you keep your sugar level normal. If you want to dig deep into your whatever mm -hmm. depths, you don't, you let it float, dip, mm -hmm. and, um, and basically when we started taking LSD, particularly in the 60s, and very bright light, um, yeah. and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, I don't know, but it, 
I know LSD now is not a, a kind of fashionable drug, but I actually think it's an incredibly good drug. Yeah, you kind of yes. realize that you could leave <laughs> yeah. on psychedelics. And I'm fighting for <laughs> LSD yeah. because no one else is. <laughs> so, and I think in the long term, people will come to realize that actually it's the best because it's the least toxic. I'm doing amazing research. Oh, thank you so much. Amazing research with um, microdosing LSD at the moment and showing that um, it increases neuroplasticity, neurogenesis, anti-inflammatory. Right, but before you go to but, research, yes. and so your life mission would be to make sure that everybody knows that people can live in psychedelics and yes. that they can be well. Yeah. And that there is, you know, They can this, increase wellness. Increase wellness. Yes. And that's when you said, okay, how can I prove that to everybody? And that's when you said science is the way. Yes. So how did you approach that? Then, yes, exactly. I thought mm. the repression, the taboo on these compounds had become so bad by the 70s that the only way through it was to use science to demonstrate the incredible potential of these compounds. And then the question was, how does one get the science done? Mm -hmm. And so for the next 30 years, I tried getting the science done without much success. So then I tried to spread the message using art, as no one minded what anyone said in art, because everyone knew it was fairly pointless, in a sort of way, pleasurable but pointless. And so one could talk about consciousness and the different ways of expanding it. Right. And so... And through art, then you sort through of... Through art. And yeah. then I suddenly realized that as a, a female, without letters after my name, I wouldn't ch change global drug policy mm -hmm. and open the doors to research. So I'd better become a foundation. Yourself. Yeah, yeah. And it's easily done. You can, can pay a few pounds. <laughs> you change your name and change you said, your name. now I'm a foundation. And, and my husband said I, that he thought he'd married a woman, and now he really married a foundation. <laughs> <laughs> Which, anyway. Um, so. With the foundation, I was lucky to get kind of 10, 15 of the best scientists in the world, including Albert Hoffman, Sasha, um, then ones in head of Oxford, Imperial, all sorts of people, mm -hmm. good, good top level scientists. Tim, Tim Knott? What? The, the, your professor at uh, Imperial that you work with. Ah, yes. Then he mm. was quite an underling, but now he's a oh, big star. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it was just amazing. But anyway. Excellent. Um, and that was your scientific advisory board? They were my scientific. They never it. gave me any advice, but their <laughs> presence. <laughs> but they give you access. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're actually, the first one who backed me from the conventional world is someone called, um, I suddenly not forgot his name now. <laughs> no, of course I haven't. Colin, uh, Colin Blakemore, and he's a wonderful scientist. And um, uh, it, when he backed me, which was brave of him to do, because uh, I didn't have the best reputation, probably, and um, everyone else did afterwards. Um, so I had, you know, a whole school of top-level neuroscientists backing me, and mm -hmm. that gave me a lot of um, more say. And I set up um, in the House of Lords doing policy reform. And then I set up doing research with different collaborations. And because I realized that brain imaging was the breakthrough, mm -hmm. um, which developed in the 90s. And brain imaging, you can kind of prove my wanting to prove the benefits. You can Your hypotheses from 1966. Yeah. Yeah, and, and to prove that psychedelics bring about a change and what it is and why it's beneficial. And so that's um, what we did. And, and, and I set up a team at um, Imperial, Beckley Imperial Psychedelic Team with Dave Nutt and yeah. then Colin, Ble uh, Colin uh, Robin K. L. Harris. And we did some breakthrough research which helped move the movement forward, I think. One was, um, which was um, proving my old hypothesis, looking at the changes in blood supply in the brain on psilocy 
Sibin, and that showed a decrease in the blood supply to a system called the default mode network, which is the modern word for ego, the modern expression. And the fact that the blood supply there is decreased and it's, it's over um, supplied in underlying neurotic illnesses, psychological illnesses like depression, then we thought of doing uh, using psilocybin to, to treat, treat depression, and that had a very successful outcome. And you also wrote books, and you wrote like 40 different uh, reports. Well, papers, and yeah. I mean, I, I played a part in them. And um, so then we did a lot of very successful research there, interesting, and um, and with other collaborators. I set up collaborations around the world and yeah. had a lot of fun. And then you said, the next step for this is to provide access through clinics, and that's when you met right. Mia. Right. Yes. So yes, in whatever, 10, 15 years ago, when things were beginning to move forward, the next problem um, after um, letting people speak about the subject, then research it, then write about it, then it's not kind of um, a death sentence, and so we've done those, but then the point comes once a lot of people have done research showing how amazingly beneficial it is, but how do people get access? And that's the big problem. So I, I was thinking about that and for a while and thinking of the different lines you can get. And because I did research all the time, I thought a clinic should have a research center in it because then um, one, you can expand the compounds you can legally use, and secondly, um, you can try practices which are more tailored to individual people, so you would be more fluid. Mm -hmm. And you realize that in Spain it would be easier. Exactly. And legal. then my dear friend yeah. um, Pablo was um, living at Beckley in a cabin in the garden, and we used to have long talks, right. and then he brilliantly introduced me to Mia, mm -hmm. who came to Beckley, and was absolutely wonderful, and obviously a most glorious partner. And Spain is really amazing. I mean, England is really in the um, dinosaur stage. It's a kind of North Korea or something. <laughs> <laughs> so cut you, ca that, cut you can't that. do anything there. <laughs> So, um, and Spain is brilliant. It hasn't legalized plants, uh, illegalized plant medicines. Um, you can actually do research with healthy people. Mm -hmm. I mean, this ridiculous taboo that the only excuse for using psychedelic is to treat illness. I mean, we all love to treat illness, and that's a very good thing to do. But still, it's not the only thing to be done. <laughs> you know? What about prevention? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So here we are continuing with those, and yes. then and Christian came in the picture, you guys got together. Yes, and then mm -hmm. my dear friend Christian came, <laughs> and who had helped very, very generously, some very exciting research in the Beckley Foundation. And um, so then there were uh, one, two, three, four of us. Pablo, I hope you're there. Pablo will be joining us. Is that there? From, and, um, Anyway, um, it, 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 it started to materialize. I mean, I'd be deciding and designing the kind of concept of a Beckley clinic, and I thought that there needs to be four arms. One, obviously, a clinic, but then one has a research center mm -hmm. to expand the possibilities of the clinic. And... Um, one can do wonderful research. It's like having a CRO, a private clinic, so you can actually research. And, and then if you want to use compounds which aren't uh, currently legal, you do it as research. And um, it has a lot of And benefits. training. And, and okay. then for training, exactly, mm. you can um, give the people from America and other countries, um, the compound, the experience of what they're doing, which is absolutely vital. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And um, there's going to be vast number uh, in need of um, trained psychedelic therapists because it just works better. That's what the research is showing. There's been no treatment for psychological um, disorders uh, other than SSRIs and, and talking therapy. And that really isn't that good. It, I mean, it's good for some people, it helps, but not at all everyone, 50% are not. And so psychedelics is the first new um, approach. And not only does, does, I mean, pharmaceutical companies will not really love it because people on the whole don't need many trips, or, uh, doses they can have a limited number of doses, which isn't ideal. But I always say, don't give up the pharmaceutical companies because there's always the microdose to come. And <laughs> I think, you know, I think the microdose is an incredibly valuable substance. At the moment, I'm working with neurodegenerative illnesses um, using microdose. So, so I'm doing some very exciting work with Alzheimer's, with Parkinson's, um, and particularly with palliative care now. I'm doing two researches, uh, one in, in um, Jamaica with natural psilocybin, another in America with LSD. Um, because old people, I've seen observational studies where um, a microdose can bring someone who's in deep Alzheimer's dementia, looking like a frightened, trapped animal, a very sad, sad sight for them and for their family. And then a microdose can suddenly bring back that vitality. And I've never seen that before, but I've seen it now, and it made me think I'm going to do palliative care, which provides when people want it, um, microdosing as one of the possible treatments. And um, I think it can transform. At the moment, we die so badly mm. that I think it's one of the great areas of need is improving Absolutely. how people die. Absolutely. And we hope that we can continue supporting that research. Yes. Thank you so much for everything that no, you've done. Don't. It was really a pleasure to have you up here. And please join me to thank, thank Amanda. <laughs> I was so uh, focused on Amanda that I <laughs> forgot to put your background there. So let me deal with this. Guess who's next? Handsome, huh? <laughs> so this is our very own Mia Fabregas. Dr. Fabregas is a medical doctor you're gonna you're gonna have to use uh, Amanda's uh, yes. So while he does that, I'll read you a little brief introduction on Mia. So uh, Dr. Fabregas is a medical doctor. He specializes in psychiatry. He uh, most notably in um, uh, drug affections, alcoholism, compulsive gambling, and personality disorders, among others. He is the founder and director of the Center of Research and Treatment for Addiction, CETA. Um, and the Institute of Applied Amazonian Ethnopsychology, or IDEA, in Brazil, um, where he studied the use of ayahuasca and its long-term effects in ritual users. Dr. Fabregas is a national and international reference in the approach of these pathologies. So please um, join me to welcome Mia Fabregas. Do you need help? Speak in English. Huh? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda, thank you for exist. <laughs> and thank you, Christian, for make this possible. The world is better with people like you. But sorry for my English. My English is for buying, not for selling. But <laughs> 
the, the psychedelics have a lot of benefits, but learning languages is not one of these capacities. No, that is not true. I, I learned uh, uh, Brazilian in, in Portuguese in Brazil, in the rainforest, and now I pay attention with English. Never in my life I pay attention in English, and right now I paid a lot of attention in English to be communicated with my friends. But <laughs> let me explain how is my work there is to introduce in the concept of the psychedelic medicine. And no sé lo que se ve. Sí, sí. Esto. No, ve. The title. Yeah. ¿Es esto lo que se ve? Yeah, con esto sale aquí. Y ¿Es lo que se ve? Es lo que sale aquí. Fantástico. Perdón. Prozac versus psilocybin. This is a, uh, I try to explain how is this different and to introduce in the concept of the, of the psychedelic medicine. Uh, how is the scenario like now, right now? Uh, the mental health problems is in the rise. In the last 20 years, the number of the people who take antidepressive is increasing 400%. Eight million of citizens of the United States support PTSD. That is amazing. It's suffering himself, and it's a very high cost, social cost, and for a force for everybody. The second, the second cause for suicide. The second cause for the people between 15 to 35 years, it's suicide. It's amazing this quantity of problems, and. 200% of, of, of the people, 300% of the people who die by opioids, opioids uh, overdose in the United States in the last 20 years. It's amazing. But if it's terrible, now it's scale. With the pandemic, only in Europe, one each two people presents discomfort, psychological dis discomfort. The 50% of the people have problems for sleeping. And the, the, the suicide is increased for 10%. It's amazing. The medicine in the last years advanced a lot. That picture is very representative. The Da Vinci robot for, for make chirurgical operations. The precision, it's incredible. Uh, perhaps the patient is in Madrid and the surgeon is in New York and have the opportunity to intervene in surgical with amazing. Uh, only the difference, the radiodiagnostics in the last 15 years compare what happened 50 years ago and how it's possible right now. The bands, it's very, very clear. This is a nice sample. When people who have problems, vision problems, 50 years ago, we need two pairs of glasses. One to read in short distance and the other one for the long distance. Many times, sometimes after, we appear the lenses with uh, bifocal. After, we appear the progressive. No short time after, it's possible the lentils and the intracorneal lentils. And now, with five minutes in a laser operation, we resolve the, these problems. That the, the medicine abounds a lot, absolutely. But what happened with the mind? The mind is in a situation special. I work like a psychiatry. I use my, in every week, the same products who chlorpromethine is the 1949, and I use every week. Aloperidol, 1958, Valium. Perhaps some people on this hall use Valium. It's in the market, it's in the hands of the doctors from the 1963. And Prozac, it's amazing, it's the 
1988. That project is look for comparate some things. Arrive at different moment. This is the cover for this magazine in the 19. Prozac is rife for resolve a lot of problems of depression. The cover of this year of the Newsweek, it's, it's the psilocybin, the, the compound of the magic mushrooms. And in the cover, that is the advance most important since the Prozac. Who changed? New paradigm, new paradigm. Just now, the psychiatry only have the opportunity to correct the symptoms. With the psychedelics, we have the opportunity to go to the cause, to the root. Have the opportunity to go inside and resolve how is the problem. This is a nice picture. Going behind the symptoms. The picture upside is very happy. In the middle, deep. Profund deep profundity, it's worry, and more deeping, it's suffering for some, some, some things. It is this example of how it's uh, possible to use psychedelics to help people. The people who suffer a uh, high level of violence or in a disaster, in a war, with sexual abuse, that is very difficult to support. The reality, it's not possible change. The reality happened, it's happened. No possible move. But if possible, it's possible change the relationship with this, with this remembers, with this. Opportunity. This is the moment to use this capacity and with this capacity build solutions for these cases. The sample of the PTSD, if you are insomnia, then normal psychiatry give uh, hypnotic. If you have, ans have anxiety, anxiolytic, and you are depressed, make an antidepressive. The psychedelic have the opportunity to come again to the situation and put in the memory in the different in different place. But in the other hand, we need work with the responsibility. Now we have proof uh, the psychedelics works, and we need evidence to build scientific. Uh, consensus about the benefits of deep substances, but, but responsibility. To pay attention, do not repeat the problem of the 70s, when the disorder who have with the use of the psychedelics uh, became the policy, regulated policy up against the drugs, the, the launch of the war of the drugs of Nixon with uh, put in the schedule one of the Convention of Vienna, this kind of substances, and this is not possible to research, is not possible to use because we classify it like uh, substances without medical interest and with half possibility to make very harm for the health. Now he changed. Now, now it's another situation, and this is our goal. This is our mission. To, prov to provide research for the uses and, and the protocols for, for use and execution of these capacities, training professionals for use these substances, and publish and dissemination advances in this field. And again, thank you for Amanda, thank you for Christian, and thank you for Shamin, 20 years uh, Eight ago, I take ayahuasca for the first time in their hand here in Ibiza. <laughs> Thank you, Shamin. You are responsible of this happen. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Mia. Thank you, Mia.
the um, as I mentioned before, uh, the four pillar that we have is the understanding of um, consciousness. And we can do that through, obviously, the relationship between plants and humans, which is, you know, what um, ethnobotany is about. For those who don't know what ethnobotany is, is a study of a region's plants and their practical uses through the traditional knowledge of a local culture and people. And we are so lucky to work with one of the best in the field, translating ethnobotany into the use for well-being. And this is Paolo Friedlander. Paolo is going to join us today virtually. He is in Argentina. He unfortunately, due to COVID and all this craziness that is going on, he couldn't be here. But um, we can uh, see him. He's going to say hello pl pl first, please. He's one of our co-founders as well, together with um, Amanda, Mia, and Christian. And Karina. <laughs> nice to see you there. Thank you for having me from distance. I will be always there. Hello, Pablo. Here, everybody's seeing you. And uh, I know that, that we have a little video that you have put together for us. I don't know if you want to say something before we, we play the video. Just to be there with you, I'm really happy to be able, even in these times, to be present. And not just by virtual ways, but uh, every act and thought and movement that is happening, I feel near and deeply connected. So I'm grateful for that connectivity that you make possible there. And I'm holding from the mountain here in Champaquí, in Argentina, where my position should be now to keep that vision flowing too. So thank you for having me from here, from home. Thank you, Pablo. Um, we're going to share the, the little video that Paolo prepared for us, please. Good evening. Salud. I'm a little sad to not be able of being there with you. But at the same time, I'm starting to feel happy because I feel you near. The companions of this adventure that is now happening and bringing us together. In these giant waves of the psychedelic renaissance. Yes. Today we are sharing the fruits of many years of work of a cultivated garden that comes from millennia of traditional uses, from almost a century of exploration and more than 50 years of psychedelic research from the scientific point of view. Not to forget exploration through all our retreats and different expeditions, inner and outer. For that, there are many reasons to celebrate. Now, to be brief and giving the protagonism to the local team and the trustees that are there happily reunited, I can say just three things. One, that the plants are talking, are singing through the visions and through us like channels. And I think in something that is becoming evident it's like a Pachamama vaccination campaign to get out of our bubbles of separation, egoism, hybrids, as a chronicle default mode network that is shaping our worlds from the past. Now we are jumping from that to the future in the conversions of the ancient wisdom with these new paradigms of science. We are at the frontiers and crossing one of these frontiers can be crossed through the special approach that the Ethnobotanical Research Program 
is aiming to have for us through the long experience of Beckley Foundation and through the big alliances that are being forged through Fundación Beckley Med, we can work very deeply and research very highly on the teacher plants and the key ones with a continuous use from millennia, recognizing their traditional values and recognizing all that not only healing power, but cognitive improvements that they can bring and a spiritual renaissance that they can help to emerge as we are noticing as a first normal input when we integrate a psychedelic experience or a shamanic one. Then we know that the future is now and that we need to have the proper tools to navigate it like the virtual tools we are developing with the virtual platform of Beckley Med that you can see soon at the website through the access button. That are not only learning management platforms that can help to develop the distance programs or trainings and research interviews, clinic sessions, community programs, etc. But they can also create new ways of interaction and exchange, of course encrypted and with their own blockchain and with different interactions that we can explore through many interesting tools that are emerging by necessity, but all the, all the lessons we receive in the lockdown and adapting ourselves and our projects to these new times. Finishing, recognizing that this are our times, the time to grow and web the new narratives and surf these waves that luckily are not just one but many and that we can understand and wisely adapt and manage a coherent, authentic approach in between all these forces that playing at play in the ground of psychedelic therapies, shamanic approach, research, different applications. I am very happy that this is happening in the proper place, at the proper time, the proper company. And I would just like to extend my gratitude to my old friends with whom I share the board of trustees of Fundación Becky Med, Amanda, Christian, Mia, Alex, and also to all the magic team that got together from Barcelona, from Ibiza, to make it possible, and also the best possible adventure in these times. Just to recognize the roots also in the old pioneers like Claudio Naranjo, that was part of it as a founder trustee uh, until he passed away, leaving his seats in good soil. And also as Jordi Riva that was uh, looking forward to be part of the research program before passing away, leaving other seats, and then celebrating life with Stan Grove and his legacy that is sharing with us precious treasures of the psychedelic therapies to training that we need for these times. And then just do not forget the importance of all the explorations that had been done on this way. And to celebrate that now is growing what it was a vision, what it was an inception. Today is growing a reality and a highly beneficial one for all the persons, communities and ecosystems involved in what we are doing. So may Fundación Beckley Med be blessed with many blessings. Yes. Salud, compañeros. Vamos a seguir. Adelante. Hello, everyone. Hello? Okay. 
So as you can see, Paolo brings a lot of serenity and peace to the team as well, besides his uh, tremendous knowledge. And uh, I think that you have all has felt it a little bit. Um, Paolo, unless you have something uh, else to add, um, you know, I would like to continue with the, with the exposure of the team. Thank you. Thank you, Pablo. During the last three years, um, the, the Beckley-Med team has, working, has been working hand in hand to develop the um, four pillars um, of research and focus of uh, Beckley-Med. That is uh, clinical research, training and education, dissemination and community. And to give you a little bit of a snapshot of what's going on within Beckley-Med, we are not just aspirational, we actually do things. So I would like to invite Deborah, Julia, David, who else? Karina, and Karina Bartolotto. Please join me here and, uh, and, and share a little bit of your experience. I think the best is that we can see to have around. Miyaki, you want to join us? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. An honor to work with you and for you to help you move this forward. So I'm very glad, very happy to have you here. Um, let's start with one of our um, co-founders. Yeah, Karina Bertolotto. Karina is um, a psychologist and she's a therapist with a lot of experience. She has extensive personal and professional experience with uh, psychedelics and not only um, through therapy but also teaching. Um, please tell us a little bit what you are doing here in, in, in Beckley Med um, with regards to education. Okay, well I will be very briefly, I'm happy to be here, thank you. And yeah, well, uh, I will talk about our present moment in the training program that we are developing, the educational area that we are developing, because we have a lot of things that we are in, a, in, in our hands now, but in the present we have the psychedelic rough legacy that I think that is really a fantastic opportunity that Stan Rock is giving us to represent him in the world. Uh, designing uh, a specific psychedelic training for us, for Berkeley Med, and we will give it in English and Spanish. People of all around the world will come to train with us with his model of uh, consciousness studies. And yeah, I think that this is the great news that we have in this moment to share with you. The training will be open just after this formal presentation, so everybody can go to the website and nobody could more. I will not stand talking about it more. Another very good news because what we are aiming to do is to do alliances. Uh, for example, we will work with MAPS. We are in conversation with Rick Dublin. Rick Dublin is developing all these um, all these legal issues that are uh, to come and DMA for strep post traumatic available for many people in the world. So we are talking with him, we are in conversation with him to bring to his training in Spanish to Spain um, the same one that is done in California. So we will have this wonderful show here to speak to Spanish spoken community and yeah this is the present and another yeah another a lot to come in the future right uh, in the future will come more more and more i think that yeah we need also people doing specializes uh, workshops and courses short ones that will give a lot of guide to users to professionals we are planning many kind of yeah, different trainings for different aspirations, but I think that the, our future goal, our future vision is to do our Beckland Med training that will be like, um, you will be a shining, how you say, a, a, a communion of rock legacy, maps, Claudia Naranjo, and I hope that the Temple of the Way of Light is also showing some models our that Matthew is here. Thank you, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nathan. 
<laughs> so yeah, that's a very famous um, training for the future. We are planning it. It will be available not only for professional users, also for people that want to to, to, to help in another way, you know, that want to be helpers, that want to contribute, and they are not psychologists. There will be a level for psychologists and a level for other, uh, yeah, people that want to really work with plants and in some kind of education about it. But what I think that is important of about what we are developing is a new paradigm in education. What it means is an embodied way of learning with showing all attributes in this process of learning that is so wild, showing the, not only the mind, also the body, the spirit, the consciousness, you know, all this together to have a real embodied learning with all our hearts, all our senses. So this is what we are developing in our, this is the underline of what we are in, doing because we are inviting people that really are like connected with this way of teaching. Great. Thank you so much, Carida. Thank you for all your contributions as well in education. Great. So I would like to pass the mic to Deborah. So we have a little bit introduction here. Deborah is kind of an amazing researcher. She's dedicated her career to work uh, with ayahuasca and with other psychedelics. Um, like 2CB, and she's a PhD in pharmacology. She's driving us. She's actually the brand force for research here for Dr. Um And her, she has a very interesting approach, which is to support people who go through grief. Tell us a little bit how you do it, how Dr. Nett does it. Well, <clears throat> how many of you know someone who have died in the last year? More than five million people uh, have died only from COVID, uh, and each death affects directly to five people. So this means that more than 25 million people are suffering the death of a loved one. And especially when people died in the way that uh, this health crisis has caused, like in this inhuman way, uh, grief can be a stack and this is reflected in the emotional suffering that is passed through our children or the next generations or the, the, the deterioration of our social bonds and, and family bonds and, and the, the, the emergence of chronic diseases and in, in the worst cases even suicide. So uh, in response to the largest pandemic uh, of the world right now that is grief, the Climate has launched this study to support more than 200 people that are, are uh, grieving a, a loved one with ayahuasca-assisted psychotherapy. So, why ayahuasca? Well, well as probably all of you know, ayahuasca can give you what, what ayahuasca gives you in partly depends on what you ask for it, ask it for. So uh, when we ask to the participants why do you want to, to, to be included in that study, they said, I, I need answers. Uh, they asked why, why this happened to my daughter, why this happened to my father, why is it worthwhile for me to live in to, to go on living. So I know, I saw you know, that ayahuasca help us to broaden our understanding of the existential questions that we all share as human beings. And thanks to Christian and his general support, the first 16 participants are, uh, are being supported with ayahuasca assisted psychotherapy right now. And we have a waiting list to, to include the next 200 participants during the next few years. So the, the goal of this study is not about the medicalization of ayahuasca. We are doing prevention, we are, doing, we are creating a healthier society and we are doing culture. So the goal is uh, to provide ayahuasca to the bereaves 
in order to face death and to be part and feel part of the miracle of life. That's, That's beautiful. Thank you so much. So now I would like to address to David. David is our editor. He wears many hats. He's a cultural journalist, a writer, an editor, and a programmer of cultural events. He runs the, the publishing house Ediciones La Llave, through which um, he translated, you know, supported translation of a book that is called La Nueva Medicina Psychedelica. And he's, he's going to tell us a little bit uh, about that. We have, um, do you want to in, tell us a little bit about your, your work? Uh, and then we have a little clip from the author as well to say, to be saying hello to, to us. You're more comfortable to speak in Spanish, right? Uh, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, does everybody here understand Spanish? Otherwise, I will. Uh... OK, yeah. sit there. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, hola, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo estáis? Um, vengo ahora de Madrid de programar un festival de novela criminal. I just came back from Madrid to program a festival on criminal uh, novel. Mm -hmm. Crime novel uh, Crime. fiction. Science. Es un festival donde <laughs> cada vez invitamos a menos escritores y más psiquiatras. It's a festival where we invite more, more psychiatrists and less writers. Tanto escritores como psiquiatras concluyen en esta última edición de este festival que tenemos un problema creciente de mala salud mental en el mundo. Both writers and psychologists, psychiatrists, concluded that we have a huge problem of mental health in the world. Este problema tiene muchas causas, pero una de ellas muy clara es la pérdida de lazos de comunidad. Um, one of the key issues for this, uh, or the key problems for this, is the lack of uh, links between the community. Desde la Fundación Beckley Med vamos a trabajar también en este sentido. Vamos a crear comunidad, vamos a hacer uh, jornadas culturales, eh, jornadas científicas, fiestas, ceremonias, eh, todo ello para crear eh, un sentido de comunidad. So from Beckley Med, we are also taking this approach. We're going to do parties, we're going to do get-togethers, we're going to do ceremonies, uh, we're going to do so many other things <laughs> Todo lo que so se nos to ocurra. create community, to create community. <laughs> mm, hace, hace muchos años uh, hice un amigo. A while ago, I made a friend. Y um, este amigo puso en mis manos una editorial. And this friend put in my, on my hands an editorial business. Y también sus libros. And also his books. Y es una persona que me acompañó, me descubrió los psicodélicos y me curó de mi bipolaridad, de mi bipolaridad y también de mi idiotez. And, and, and he also introduced him to psychedelics and cured him from idiocy and bipolar disorder. Bueno, de esto último, <laughs> no del todo. <laughs> no, well... I said bipolar disorder was <laughs> idiocy last, and he's not yet cured from the sec from the latter. <laughs> Ahora contamos con un recurso que se llama Ediciones de Llave. Contamos con una editorial para apoyar también la eh, Fundación Beckley Med. Vamos a publicar libros de Amanda Fielding, de Ben Sessa, de espero que también de Terence McKenna. So now we count with an editorial business where we are going to publish also books from Amanda and from. Ben Sesa, Teres McKenna, eh, Luis Eduardo Luna, un and largo etc. Bueno, es un recurso que vamos a tener a nuestra disposición también. Una, una editorial que es una editorial pequeña, pero ideológicamente muy poderosa y ya empieza a ser muy conocida en el mundo de lo psicoespiritual. Es una pequeña editorial, pero está creciendo lentamente y está llegando ahí para tener un nombre en el mundo del business. Este amigo y guía que hizo tanto por mí se llamaba Claudio Naranjo. This friend and guide was name, uh, his name was Claudio Naranjo. Y nada más por mi parte. And nothing else from his side. So thank you so much. Um, I'm going to just quickly uh, pass a little clip that uh, was sent to all of us by, from the author, um, Don Latin. Hello, everyone. 
Oh. Greetings from San Francisco. My name is Don Lamb. Author of the first in a series of books to be published by Beckley Med and Ediciones La Llave. Ah, yeah, you have it. Hello, everyone, and greetings from San Francisco. My name is Don Latin, and I'm the author of the first in a series of books to be published by Beckley Med and Ediciones La Llave. Um, the title of this Spanish language edition of my newest book is La Nueva Medicina Psychedelica, Terapia, Ciencia e Espiritualidad. Unfortunately, I am not able to be with you at this event in Ibiza, but I was able to enjoy a week in Barcelona earlier this month where I got to spend some quality time with many of you on the Beckley Med team. Um, that was a very short clip because it was like nine minutes and we thought, okay, let's say hello and then we talk about this <laughs> So that's a short version of Don Latin. But, uh, <laughs> and, and the book of Don Latin talks also about it. Hopefully one day you can read it. Those, those who, there is an English version, don't worry about it. What is the name of the English version? El nombre del... Changing Our Minds. Um, and, and in that book, it also talks about the use of ketamine for use. And we have here... Um, Dr. Julia Hafkin. I call her Julia Jabkin. I think it's nice. But uh, uh, Julia is, is, is a very, is a psychiatrist and uh, she treats her patients with uh, ketamine, but she doesn't stop there. She also adds holistic approaches to make sure that those psychedelic treatments are long, you know, their, their efficacy is prolonged. Tell us a little bit about that, your, your approach and, and how we can, how Beckley is integrating all these holistic approaches. Okay, well, thank you. Um, yes, I use a holistic approach because I think that um, whatever happens to you in your life is stored not only in your mind, but also in your body and your spirit, of course. Um, so combining holistic techniques with uh, different compounds, I think it's a way to to yeah to work and to develop like the the awareness of the whole root of the situation yeah uh as you will said we are working now with ketamine uh because of legal reasons of course but we are looking forward to go on expanding these treatments and being able to work with different natural compounds and different compounds and yeah you said that Ketamine, it's not a uh, psychedelic itself, but we know, I mean, it's well known that it can induce uh, non-ordinary states of consciousness. And depending on the dose, uh, you can get like an empathogenic experience or even an, uh, an out-of-body experience. Uh, and no matter the dose, you are going to get like more awareness of your body. Yeah. So this is an opportunity to combine it with these different techniques. What we are doing is uh, before the ketamine sessions, um, the, the person is going to have like uh, acceptance and commitment therapy and afterwards as well. Uh, mindfulness as well in group sessions as well because we think that the group sessions is a very important part here as well. Um, and during the ketamine sessions itself, Mm, we, we think that combining somatic techniques with ketamine, it's wonderful because it's like a comprehensive therapy, you know? Uh, well, mainly because uh, like the body, it's like both a source yeah, of information. Our body is a source of information uh, and it's also our intervention target. So... Yeah, it's wonderful mixing, I don't know, what, well, yeah, we use different techniques like body-mind centering. And you design the protocols actually to go along together, the yeah. same, actually, you three design yeah. protocols yeah, so that that's you can right. treat better your patients. It's like we, we're trying to, to prove that, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, the purpose is not using ketamine for treat depression, because if not, we're going to, to be like, okay, take an SSRI, take ketamine, and no, of course, that's not the purpose. Uh, so yeah, it's like, okay, combining, it's like, okay, let's, because 
ketamine and the other compounds, uh, the, the main thing, like the, the most important thing, it's like, okay, they uh, promote neuroplasticity, yeah? So there we have like a window to fill it with new experiences, with new paths, yeah? yeah? To give like the, the person different tools uh, to get, yeah, to, to, yeah to, to set like new paths in, the, in their life um, and that's what we are trying to prove as well, like combining these different techniques and having this like holistic approach. Uh, we don't think that you have like a disease, we have to give you something, so we are going to get rid of it. No, I mean, we have to get there, we have to explore. And I think that the body, it's like, pff, we have a lot of information there and we have a lot of, of ways to intervene there. So Exactly. Yeah. Thank you so much, Julia. And that, you know, <laughs> and uh, I would like to also introduce you to Iñaki. Sorry, Iñaki, put you on the spot. <laughs> Iñaki is our head of communications and everything that we do here that, you know, is published as well. Iñaki takes it and, and disseminates it and transform it and, you know, is, is a focus on our uh, social media and uh, thinking beyond his line of duty. So thank you so much, Iñaki. <laughs> and I thank you guys, you can come back to this. So this is just a little glimpse of what we can do with the limited resources that we have. So imagine how much we can do if you all can help us or if, you know, and for this, uh, to invite you to, to, you know, to close and, and to invite you to become members of our family, I welcome uh, Christian again. Thank you. <laughs> okay, like thank you, everybody. Uh, you know, Ibiza is not really known for sitting and listening, uh, <laughs> but I'm sure, I promise you we're going to... Uh, move upside now, we're going to get some delicious food and we're going to get some nice drinks and maybe some chocolates moving around that tastes really good <laughs> and then we're going to have wonderful music and then we're going to do what Ibiza does much, much better than listening and that's dancing. So we're not going to bore you too much but just want to say like really I, I feel so touched uh, to be and privileged to be here. Uh, I want to also extend one big uh, gratitude to Anton, who generously hosts us here today. Uh, and uh, beyond being just a wonderful friend, uh, Anton is really one of the boldest and bravest and uh, knowledgeable uh, uh, compatriots yeah, in this uh, yeah. kind of uh, psychonaut journey that we're all on. So thank you, uh, Anton, for friendship and inspiration and generous hospitality. Uh, and, um, you know, look, we, we are really at, uh, we're, we, we're a few years in, but we're really on the b beginning of the journey. Uh, Lena joined just a couple of weeks ago, and we are now kind of distilling down exactly what the plan for the next three years are and we're going to come back and we're going to uh, 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 raise money and raise awareness for this project and, and we really hope if you're interested in, in uh, learning more and keeping up to date we're going to come back to you and inform you uh, when that process starts but um, I think it's needless to say it's a unique team, it's a unique opportunity and, and I th feel there's so much integrity in Sweden we have a uh, this word uh, called eld själ. Eld is fire and själ is soul and it describes someone that is pursuing a mission that goes beyond uh, you know, a commercial interests or you're just doing it because it's in your heart and you have to do it and I'm, I'm so honored to be part of this team where you know, every single one is, is, is a passionate pursuer of this cause because they believe in it and, and pursue it with so much humility and integrity and really searching for truth and not uh, uh, driving an agenda. So I'm, I'm so excited to see where this goes. And uh, thank you all for being here. Thank you all for making this possible. And let's have a good time. And uh, I hope when we come back with more information on Beckley SciTech, you'll, uh, you'll uh, uh, give us uh, and give the team the support uh, they deserve. Thank you, everyone, and enjoy the evening, and let's have a great time Unless together. Alexander.
Yeah, we, we're going to go up, we're going to have some food, we're going to have some drinks, then we can come back down here and Alex Serra is going to play and we're yep. going to have some other artists uh, sharing their wonderful uh, artists. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> 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 ¿Qué tal? Muy bien, muy bien.